In this video, we're going to talk about a couple of new components in chat CN UI that I have either used in previous projects or that I'm going to use them in future projects. I find them helpful and hopefully it will help you in your project. So let's go to the components section. They're tagged with this new flag. There's a carousel, there's a drawer, there's a pagination, resizable component, and sonar. So we've mentioned a couple of them, or as I said, We've used a couple of them in previous projects, but we're going to review them all. So carousel, let's just start with the carousel. This is using a block carousel, interestingly enough, under the hood. So if you go to the docs, you could actually see it's a block carousel. This is something that we did cover a couple of weeks ago on the channel. So it's an amazing lightweight carousel library with fluid motion and great swipe position. It's extendable. There's a plugin system and it's framework agnostic in the sense that you could just use it with anything. So if you go to the Get Started section, uh, you could use it with React, Vue, Svelte, Solid, Vanilla, JavaScript, or whatever. I'm going to link to my video in the description or in the card somewhere if you're interested in using this library. I talk about the React module and the different plugins that comes built in officially with um, the carousel or, or with the library different APIs and different examples that you can uh, in, get inspired by. So watch that video if you're interested. But going back to ShatCN, this is what actually ShatCN is using under the hood to render this carousel component. So as you can see here, it has these two pagination buttons on the side. If you come down, you can just, it's a wrapper around the library we just looked at, but you can just install it through ShatCN and get this component, the carousel, the content, the item, the next and previous buttons, and then you can just e easily use this. Now, because it's a wrapper around Umbella carousel, you can pass the props that you pass into Umbella to this. For example, here you see some examples of using the number of slides per view to control how many slides you see, um, and you can control the spacing, um, this is a free drag, again, comes with the API from Umbella Carousel. You can change the axis or the orientation, whether it's horizontal or vertical. And as you can see here, you can pass options to the carousel using the opt prop. So you can go to the docs and whatever option that you have there, you can just pass it to this carousel component. You can also get the API if you remember, or if you have watched the video that I had, you can get an instance of the carousel API to be able to call, for example, this previous index buttons or render the number of the slides that you have here programmatically by using the API. So you could just do the same thing here as well by passing in this set API function to your carousel component. Under the hood, Embella carousel works in a way that you pass in a ref to a, an element and it gives you the API back. This is just working uh, behind the scene or under the hood from Shatsy and Component. You could, use it, you could easily use your own state to hold a reference to the carousel API here. And obviously we have events, different events that you can listen to and you can also access them via the API here. So you set the API the same way that we did and you, you have access to all the events that Embella Carousel actually emits behind the scene. And again, plugins is something that comes with that package. It's also here. You can just pass in plugins like so and the options to them to then um, force your carousel to use those plugins. It has the autoplay, which is just going to autoplay uh, your slides. It has the auto scroll, which is going to just automatically scroll them instead of snapping to scroll positions. It just uh, scrolls so again this is a wrapper around that api you could use it here it makes it very easy to use it to render or use the same kind of design system that you have if you're using chat cn library but anytime you needed to extend or access the api or add a plugin you can look or reference the embella carousel documentation and see how you would go about implementing it here so that was the first one which is the carousel the second one is drawer we actually use this drawer or two of these components that we are talking about today in the last video that we did on the channel, which was the AI chatbot. So here, 
as you can see, let me actually show them both. So this is the added authentication and Stripe subscriptions to this AI chatbot. I'm going to also include a link to this video as well. If you go ahead and send a test message without having any credit, it shows you this Toast notification, which is using Sonar, which we're going to get into in a second, but once you click on the Get More, it opens this drawer from the bottom. So let's go back and look at this drawer. Now, the drawer component is a wrapper around Wall by Emil Kowalski. He's the same creator for Sonar as well. So let's actually jump there for a second and we're going to come back here. So here you can see different examples of how to use this. And Shatsy and component is actually a wrapper around this, but there's uh, actually some nice examples here. For example, with scaled background, if I open this up, it opens the code sandbox that contains this code. If you see here, when I click um, that page behind it, it is scales down and then the door opens. So it, it, there are nice examples here on the GitHub repository for scaling or not scaling the background for making the container scrollable and what direction it opens up from, from the bottom, top, right, left. So you can definitely look into that. And as I mentioned, this drawer from Shatsian is a wrapper around that. It's very easy to work with. So you would just import this drawer, put in a trigger, just like this trigger that we have here. And then you would just have a header component for your headers, a footer component, and then a content which wraps everything together. You can also combine this component with a dialog. So it shows a dialog or a modal on desktop, but it shows a drawer on mobile. So you can use it in ways appropriate for your application. So that was the drawer, which is a very nice slide in kind of component that you can use. And I've actually used it here, as I mentioned, it's really nice. Now the next one is pagination. Now I haven't yet used this in any specific project. We've done tables in Chats and UI in, and in that component, we had the pagination at the bottom of our table. Um, but we're going to have more videos on these specific components later on on the channel. So stay tuned. In almost every project, we are using uh, one or two of these new components or Shatsian components in general. Now, the last one that I want to talk about, or maybe second last one, which is very interesting, is resizable. This allows you to create resizable components and add handles to it. And it's very easy to do so. You can just get this resizable panel and then panel one, panel two, and a handle in between. And that's all you need. You could set a direction to be vertical or horizontal, like the one that we saw above. You can also add this nice little handle here with the direction. So it's very easy to use. And oftentimes you would have the components that you would want to um, kind of resize. And it's very nice and easy to implement this. I'm going to use this in a project that is going to come up on the channel very soon. Uh, and I'm excited to see how this turns out. We're going to have videos on one side and a list of lessons on the other side, something very similar to uh, my own course or my own platform for the Next.js course that I have on the site. By the way, I do have a Next.js course. If you're interested, there's a link in the description. Check it out. It's, it's a great resource if you want to learn Next.js. And uh, it's a living thing as in that I update lessons as we're going forward. I've, I've added so many lessons since it was published. So it's, it's a great resource if you are into learning Next.js. So definitely check it out. But we're going to create um, such a thing where we would have modules and lessons on one side, videos on the other. It'd be great to give this option to the users to shrink or uh, expand this video area to the, to the extent that they want. Now, the last one is Sonar. Sonar uh, is a wrapper around, um, or the Toast notification is a wrapper around Sonar, which is again created by Emil Kowalski. And if you go to the docs, you, it takes you actually to the Sonar itself. We have, I've covered this um, in on the channel and I've used it in the project just like this one. So this Toast notification that you saw in the corner up there, is using that, you can add an action to it, you can change the colors, add a close button. It has nice animation and if you have a multiple, like let's say I have a toast here and then I do again, as you can see here, they're very nice in the way that they are rendered. They come with animation as well. 
And by the way, if you're into animations or creating these type of components, Emil Kowalski has actually a course coming up. It's on animations.dev. I'm going to include the link in the description for this as well, where he would talk about how to do these animations and build components with animations using Frame in Motion. So if you're into that, which I am, and I've already pre-ordered a course, you go ahead and pre-order the course now before it is uh, published. I'm not affiliated with him, but I just love the stuff he makes. So uh, feel free to check this out. And uh, two of the components that we talked about today, Sonner, the Toast notification in the door is actually uh, from the same creator uh, where Shatsian just created a wrapper around them and it's using them here. So with that, this is the last component that we had. Another component that I really like here is the calendar. It's not a new component, but I've used it in side projects a lot. This is a wrapper around another React, popular React, date picker or React uh, calendar or date library. It has great APIs and extensibility, so which is also available to you if you're using it here. This is, again, another nice wrapper around something else that you can just create and pass different modes and use all the APIs that's exposed to you from this React Day Picker package. So definitely check it out if you haven't used it. It's very nice. And that about wraps this video. I hope this was helpful. Um, he's adding more components, so check this library out every once in a while. I'll try to make videos on anything exciting that comes out, but if you are into using UI libraries and components like this, um, th there's usually new updates here that you can use in your projects. So if you have any questions, like always, hit me up in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.